everybody. Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Benchmade proper. Um, first off, though, I want to thank my buddy Christian for picking this guy up. Um, he gave me a great, great deal on it, and I appreciate that very much, and so thanks, Christian. Next thing, size comparison. Um, this guy is not all that huge. Um, first off, we'll do, of course, the comparison of the Delica. You can see here it's about the same amount of blade length as the Delica, although in a slightly different configuration. Here it is against your Ontario Rat number one, and the Rat number two is is probably around here someplace. Here we go, Rat 2. So again, about the same amount of blade length here. And then uh, let's compare it to a couple of other modern slip joint knives. Right here is the Spydeco Rhodey, which is my personal favorite modern slip joint knife. And uh, here's another one that's a little bit crazy. Um, this is the uh, Hindera XM18 slip joint, which is a very, very interesting new entrant in that slip joint category. And then finally, we'll compare it to something a little bit more traditional. This is a GEC Wall Street number 99 pattern knife. Very, very interesting knife here. So um, there we go. Second, a couple of notes here. Um, this is the uh, G10 version, in case you can't tell. This also comes in Micarta. And since I picked this guy up, uh, Benchmade has released a new version with a clip point blade, uh, which may be more appealing to some if you don't love the sheepy blade. I personally love the sheepy blade, but, uh, you know, everybody's got different tastes. Uh, and so there you go. Let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your Benchmade proper here. So on the good side, first off, I appreciate very much that even though this is a slip joint, Benchmade has given us the option to disassemble and maintain it. Um, that's great because I love disassemblies and whatnot, but it's also great because it gives you just a, a much easier time to maintain your tool if the action starts to get sticky or gritty or something like that. Um, I, I absolutely do not miss the uh, pin construction on all the slip joints, and uh, that that's absolutely something that's great. So thank you, Benchmade, for that. Another thing that I appreciate in the construction is that this is using uh, phosphor bronze washes. Uh, which just means that you're not going to get the same kinds of scratches along the uh, the blade from the liners as you do on knives where the blade, I'm sorry, where the liners themselves are actually uh, the, uh, the the washes there. And so that's something I appreciate. Next thing, ergonomically speaking, this is doing pretty good for me. Um, it fits nicely in the hand. These little uh, kind of raised ridges keep it centered in the hand. I don't feel like I'm going to slide out onto it and whatnot. Um, and so ergonomically speaking, it's also thick enough that it fills the hand. This is pretty damn good in my hand. So I appreciate that. Speaking of handedness, this is a pretty much ambidextrous knife. Um, it's clipless and it doesn't have a locking mechanism. The only thing that is slightly handed is that the nail nick is only on one side. But uh, look, the thing is, it doesn't really matter which side you're using it with. Uh, it, it works just fine in that way. So ambidextrous, yeah, pretty much. Um, next thing, this is a very legal knife. Because it is non-locking, because the blade is under three inches, there are a lot of places where this is going to be legal. And uh, different countries may have laws against locking. Look, this is solid, and this gives a lot of people a great option for an everyday carry piece that's using modern steels, modern materials, etc., who might have otherwise been put in a traditional kind of land where they didn't necessarily love everything. So I love that very much. Um, so the legality is great. And then finally, um, on the good side, the quality of this guy is actually good to go. I have very few complaints about the quality here, and they're all nitpicks. Um, and I haven't actually heard any quality control issues with the proper, um, given it's a, a very different sort of mechanism, but this is a Benchmade that I've never heard a problem with quality-wise. If you have, let me know down in the comments, but this one is damn near perfect, and there's just, uh, so that's great. Um, I'm very, very glad not to have to give the Benchmade quality control speech with this guy, and he is hoping I have to give it less and less in the future. So um, to me, at least, that's what's good, is that it, the quality on this guy is fine, and I've not heard quality control issues here. It's very legal, it's fully ambidextrous, good ergonomics, phosphor bronze washes, and it is disassemblable, which is absolutely great. Um, let's talk about what's really, really great about this guy what is great about this knife 100% is the blade. Um, because the blade is, well, great. Um, it's great in a couple of ways. I love this sheep's foot sort of blade because it gives you both the ability to make these kinds of draw cuts as well as just generalized cutting, um, which is good. But also, it's relatively thin in the blade. You can see here the stock thickness is about where you would expect. Um, that's great. Uh, it has a very, very nice sharpening choil built on there, making this a little bit easier to sharpen. Um, it is relatively slicey. It could be a little thinner behind the edge, but it is absolutely relatively slicey. Um, and best of all, the steel is S30V. Look, S30V is a great modern steel. It is a super steel. And compared to what you were offered in a lot of traditional knives, which are usually some sort of a high carbon steel, uh, even, you know, some lower end stainless, this is pretty excellent. And so to see more traditional style knives available in modern steels, 
absolutely 100% is great to me. And so the, the best part about this knife, in my opinion, is this blade. It is a great blade. Um, let's talk about what's bad here. On the bad side, first off, um, although I was just praising the blade, I think they could have absolutely ground this a little more aggressively and ended up thinner behind the edge. Traditional knives are generally slicing beasts, and so I don't love seeing the trend of overly thick grinds applied to them. Uh, so I do hope that Benchmade for future models does grind that a little bit more thinly. Um, next thing, this does not come with a slip or a clip or anything like that, which means the only way you're going to be able to carry this guy is just by tossing it in your pocket. And look, that works fine. The pull on this is fine such that it's not going to come open, um, but it's not something I fell in love with. I ended up, I had a leather slip around that I ended up using for it, but still, um, not so great. I'd love to see them offer something like that, especially at this kind of price. Next thing, and the only real fit and finish foul I can ding them on here is that the back on this guy isn't super smooth. You can see, maybe, that there are little kind of differences in prominence between all of these various layers. It's not a huge deal, but it's definitely enough to snag your fingernail coming across there. And it's not great, especially compared to what you see on other traditional knives, where there's just a very smooth surface there. That's one area that Benchmade could absolutely up their game as they continue with this guy. Next thing, um, I gotta say, the nail nick doesn't do it for me. I don't love nail nicks to start with, um, but this guy just feels like somebody just hit the knife with a Dremel before it went in a box. And and the fact that it's not on the other side too, I don't know. Um, I would much prefer this knife without the Dremel, uh, I'm sorry, well, yeah, actually without the Dremel, <laughs> but uh, without the nail nick, but with an easy open notch. That's what I've got on this little guy here where the, the, the blade, uh, the, the handle drops down just a little bit so you can really get in there with your thumb and do a better job of popping it open. I can open this two-handed, no problem, but that easy open would make this a little nicer. Next thing, this is more maybe a personal taste thing, but it feels like the handle of this knife is a lot lower than the blade of the knife. And that as a result makes the blade feel like it's very likely to do something like this as I'm cutting with it. I um, mean, especially because I want to choke up and I want to have my thumb up here, my thumb is going to be pushing down. I, this was really, really unpleasant. Given I'm used to slip joints with some kind of a finger choil, or at least with an unsharpened area at the base of the blade, so that if it does start to cut, this is a back lock, but still, that, that if it does start to cut, it'll just stop your finger. Your finger will stop it on a unsharpened area. This guy always left me feeling a little bit concerned, because if this starts to shut, it's just going to start cutting my finger, and that's that's just not great. Um, and so I would prefer that they uh, just do that a little differently. Give me a little unsharpened area or something like that, just so I feel a little more secure in that. Maybe that won't bother slip joint guys who are used to it, but it sure bothered me. And part of the reason it bothered me a little bit, and something that will bother slip joint guys, is that the action on this guy isn't all that compelling. Um, the spring on it feels a little bit weak, and it's not very snappy. Uh, it is very straightforward to just move this guy around with just a little bit of thumb motion, um, more so than some other slip joints I've handled. Um, and, you know, there are, it does have a half stop, but it's it also has a three-quarter stop. Like, it feels like it wants to stop here, and then here, and then then it finally snaps shut there, but there's not all that much snappitude to it. I mean, in some areas, if you set it up right, so the action on this guy is just not super compelling. If you are used to a slip joint with the great walk and talk, this probably isn't going to impress you. It's okay, it works, but I'd love to see a little more tension keeping this guy closed, and I'd like to see a little bit more smoothness in this process. But that said, this is Benchmade's first slip joint, and it's not all that bad for their very first rodeo, so to speak. Then finally, on the bad side, this is pricey. It's 120 bucks. Um, it's not cheap. The materials are S30V, it's G10. You know what? I, I can almost see it, but again, the butterfly's pretty expensive. I, I, I just like to see if this guy could come down in price a little bit more, but I say that about pretty much every bench made. So, um, to me at least, all of that is the bad, is that this is a little bit on the pricey side, although certainly not too awful. Um, the action on it is not compelling. Um, I don't love how high the blade feels to be above the handle. There's no unsharpened area down here in case it does shut on my finger. I uh, don't really love the nail nick on this guy, and uh, the back lock, or I'm sorry, the back isn't particularly smooth. There's no slip or clip, and it is a little thinner behind the edge, uh, thicker behind the edge than it needs to be. Ugly-wise, honestly, there's not really anything particularly ugly here. I mean, the price is getting borderline. If they raised it at all, oh yeah, ugly. But um, on the whole, there's a lot of good here. So let's jump into your final conclusion. So, final conclusion. Personally, slip joints are not my bag. They're, they're not for me. They're not where I, I want to go, and they're not the kinds of tools that are best suited to my life. 
But that said, this is a pretty damn good knife, and it is more importantly a knife that I love seeing, because it shows me a lot of good things. First off, it is a traditional knife made by a modern company using modern materials. That is absolutely something that needs to happen, and I cannot wait to see more blending of traditional and modern in every dimension. I think that we have moved very far forward in the modern knife market, but there is a lot to be gained from looking back at some level. So I, I love seeing that. It is also way outside Benchmade's norm in their comfort zone. Um, considering that for a while there, Benchmade was kind of just the access lock company, seeing them drop a slip joint is a new trick from an old dog. And that really, I don't know, I hope that this continues to revitalize the brand and to give people an impression of Benchmade as something more dynamic, uh, which is good. It is also very nicely made, which is another thing that Benchmade really needs to be doing right now. It's very legal in many places, which is great. And frankly, knives like this, these sorts of modern and traditional things are a great way to pull in new people from outside of the, you know, EDC world, so to speak, into carrying a pocket knife. Somebody might start here because that's what grandpappy carried, and then they might end up with, you know, your 940 or something when they realize, you know, holy crap, this is a really useful tool, but I kind of want one with a clip, or I want one I can open with one hand. You know, this kind of thing is going to sell a lot of 940s down the road. Um, and so I love, love, love seeing them doing things like this and their collaborations with Shinola and otherwise. Um, this is a great idea for the industry in general. As for the knife itself, I think it's pretty good, but I also think Benchmade's gonna do it better over time, because they haven't immediately created the slip joint to end all slip joints. I hope future versions have a slightly better action. Maybe they lose the damn nail nick, and that they uh, can find a way to use a slightly less expensive butterfly on the blade and get that price down. But, uh, you know, while I'm dreaming, I'd love to see one of these guys in the uh, diamond wood, fake wood sort of thing, as well as uh, maybe a backlock variant. Just, just saying, that'd be pretty awesome. But even still, uh, with all that said, this is a pretty interesting knife. Um, it, it doesn't fit my life, like I said, so it's not a keeper for me. But the thing is, if you love a good slippy, or you're a modern knife guy and you want to try a good slippy, I think this is a pretty good option for you. And so this may wind up being your proper choice. Anyways, I hope that this has been interesting to you, that I haven't slipped too far out of reality, and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.